Hello everyone, this is Bob Browner with Community Coronavirus Update number 100. Today we'll talk about, uh, I think that actually no lockdowns would be needed if we just pick two or three, and we'll cover some of the latest on Omicron and Nebraska numbers. So, uh, latest Nebraska numbers, unfortunately our hospitalizations continue to rise. So the state dashboard, we're up to 576, highest since before Christmas. Uh, and the picture varies based on where you are in Nebraska, which I think again, it points to what we I think we really should be doing in Nebraska if we want to get a control of this. Uh, no, Omaha's numbers are looking really scary. So they're up from, they were kind of hovering around 180 to 200 for about a month and a half or so, which was becoming a burden to them, but now they're getting a huge peak. They're up to 293 and rising. Uh, and so it's not to the peak th of last time uh, this year, last year. However, this was a rapid rise and a rapid drop. This is a prolonged surge and it's causing more and more strain on the hospitals and it's about to get worse. Uh, if we look at community rates, even though case rates aren't as uh, accurate as they used to be, uh, they're going up even though they're inaccurate, which is even more scary because this is probably quite an underestimate of true cases. And so you see this real big peak and usually the hospitalizations follow this by two to three weeks. So it means this is probably going to get worse. Um, the problem, of course, is positivity rate. When your positivity rate is this high, that means there's a lot of people either not getting tested or doing home tests that never get reported, which means this rate is probably much higher in the areas, especially when your positivity rate's over 10% or even over 25%, like the Kearney area. So this means across the state, things are likely to get much worse in the next couple weeks for the hospital's perspective. Uh, Lincoln, not as bad, actually. Uh, we have higher vaccination rates and we still have our mask ordinance. Uh, Lincoln Public Schools uh, masking is working, I think, generally really, really pretty well. We have an increase in cases, but not near the spike that Omaha has and our positivity rates much lower. So this is a little bit more accurate where theirs is more of an underestimate. So what you see is our own hospitalizations for Lincoln people. The blue line is relatively stable, kind of in the 50s and 60s. Probably will go up a little bit because of this, but not hugely so. Uh, that's a problem that's going to be, uh, hopefully we can keep preserve this because this orange line, which is people coming from outside of the host, uh, uh, Lancaster County, we got to preserve that capacity because people out around us are going to really need to the, send those people to the hospital because they're going to be overwhelmed. Uh, and again, back to the th thing we've been saying, talking about this for two years now, uh, multiple layers for public health. You cannot rely on just one layer. Even two layers, I think, would be sufficient. So managing a, a pandemic, I think we should, if we at least just pick two or three and do two of these well, I think we'd be able to get past this and get closer to normal life. I just don't know if it's going to happen anytime soon, but I'll talk about some ideas of maybe getting there. Uh, but essentially we need vaccinations of 85 plus percent, uh, highly vaccinated of, well, people are saying areas of Nebraska, the United States are highly vaccinated. Almost no place in the United States is highly vaccinated. That's part of our problem. You do need non pharmaceutical interventions and masking does work. And I'll show you what I think is some really good ideas on that. But of course, testing and using that to, to establish a green pass. So a lot of the countries that have high rates but are doing fine, it's because uh, partly because they're not, they're doing green pass well. So if you look at England, Germany, and the United States, both have, all three have very high case rates right now, but only two are struggling uh, quite so badly with overwhelmed hospitals. That's Germany and the United States. Well, one reason is England has really much better, probably you know, overall better vaccination rates in these countries and the complete vaccination. People have had the booster and the third dose. So we need to quit calling second dose fully vaccinated. You need that booster slash third dose approach like England is doing. This is what preserves your hospital capacity and makes it so that, that uh, COVID is manageable. We are nowhere near where we need to be for booster vaccinations. That's why our hospitals are getting overwhelmed because you can have high case rates, but they're not as bad when people are vaccinated. Uh, and late, uh, there should be uh, new data coming out on this soon, but this is a little old, but still the, the hospitalization rate in Nebraska for unvaccinated versus fully vaccinated, it's not even close. You're getting a little dip of this fully vaccinated. That's because the boosters are starting to work. Actually, the people are doing a better job getting their boosters. So this is actually dropping, not rising, whereas this continues to rise dramatically. So for a 14 to one uh, risk ratio for unvaccinated versus fully vaccinated. Uh, so we need to do all of these things if we really want to get things under control. Uh, so let's talk about masking. So uh, interesting statistics for this week from Lincoln Public Schools. Uh, so we, uh, Lincoln Public Schools does track uh, positives uh, and they actually graph it just like the city does. And if you overlay uh, the Lincoln Public Schools positive positivity rate, it's, pr it's pretty much similar to what the city's does. So mostly what we're seeing in Lincoln Public School is spillover from the community. And I don't think we're, well, I know we're not having very much spread. I, I was at a meeting and they were 
presented that we've had out of 502 potential high-risk close contacts in elementary school, only 14 became positive. So that's m almost, you know, that's well over 90% effectiveness of our masking approach. And those 14 who became positive, that isn't necessarily school within school spread. It could have been, but a lot of times those kids are friends. So it could have happened at lunch or recess or outside of school playing soccer or something like that. But still 14 out of 502 is really good. So the masking approach we're doing is working really well. It's not 100%, nothing's 100%. So they, yeah, there's people complaining about there's maybe some kids that are nose com going nose command and things like that. But overall masking in schools is working. And I think we've got pretty really, well, we've got really solid evidence that, that that approach is working and helping to keep Lincoln's numbers more manageable. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect in a pandemic. R doesn't have to be zero, it just has to be less than one. So as long as we get things, our rates dropping by doing a layering of things, we will be out of this pandemic, but we need to do that consistently, not just at a Lincoln level, but across the state. So managing pandemic, we also need to, I think, get to the green pass thing. So right now at the point, my wife and I, we like to go to restaurants. We're not, I'm not going to go to restaurants anymore. Our rates are too high, certainly with Omicron. However, if, it, if a restaurant in Lincoln were to, develop, were to voluntarily adopt a green pass or have nights of, where people have to be vaccine only, I'd go back out to the restaurants. Right now, I'm going to avoid restaurants in the next couple of weeks until things settle down a little bit, a little bit or until a restaurant serves a customer like me. Uh, it's a free market. If people want, I think, it, I, think if, uh, I think this would take off. If a restaurant announced that they were going to have a vaccine only, uh, seatings like on certain nights. I think you get a lot of people like me going back to the restaurants again, but I, right now I'd probably avoid them. Uh, Omicron, we are getting some uh, good answers. And again, uh, your Caitlin Jetalina still provides, I think, some of the best summaries out there right now. So I keep following her. So this is this is data coming from her update today, uh, which I think does a good job answering the questions that I was pointing out last week. So we got three quick questions on Omicron. Number one, is it more infectious? Unfortunately, the added it is, it's probably at least as infectious as Delta maybe more so. So if you compare the, the, the three prior waves in, in South Africa compared to Omicron, Omicron, you look at how steep that is compared to the others. So it's probably at least as infectious as Delta, if not more so. Uh, unfortunately, that's kind of bad news. Uh, teaming that up with, does it evade immunity? Well, it looks like it might evade immunity. And so they're now doing some studies looking at Omicron. If you've had either two shots of Pfizer's or two shots plus an infection, they didn't have three shots, unfortunately, because I think that's what we really want to know for people like me with a booster. I think, though, that two shots of Pfizer plus an infection is probably the same as having two shots plus a booster. So there is a drop, but not, you know, if you had those three uh, doses, either two do three doses of, of the vaccine or two doses of the vaccine plus an infection, I think you'd probably be okay. Uh, so there is some evasioning of immunity more so than some of the other variants. Uh, and so that's unfortunate, but looking like that's what we're seeing. Uh, last question though, is it more severe than Delta? And I think there's a lot of hope that, oh, maybe it'll act more like the common cold. And fortunately that's uh, optimism is proving to maybe not be the case. So if we look at hospitalizations now that which lag a couple weeks, you're starting to see hospitalization rates in South Africa start heading up. Uh, so they had the dip after the last surge. Now they're going back up again, uh, compared to different waves to each other. It looks like Omicron is causing hospitalizations. So unfortunately, it's looking like it may be just as bad as Delta and you know, who knows, maybe worse. So we don't know that yet. It's gonna take probably a couple more weeks. There's a few things that are gonna throw, throw off South Africa versus us. And one is South Africa is a younger population and not nearly as vaccinated a population as ours. So uh, we don't know for sure what that's going to look like yet until it, until we start wrap, mapping some rates in in, uh, in Europe or the United States. It's going to take a couple of weeks before we have a real final answer on that. But so far, the uh, the optimism of last week may not be justified. Uh, the problem, of course, in the United States too, is people. You can't look at U.S. numbers by themselves. You need to look at it by region by region because what happens? It looks like coronavirus just keeps sloshing back and forth across the country. You know, our Delta wave started mostly in the south, moved up, you know, across. The, up in the west. Now it's kind of across the northeast, upper north, and even into Mex New Mexico, for example. But what is worrying me now is look at Missouri, Kansas, and Arkansas starting to head back up again. And so just like you see these, you know, cycling every three to six to nine months kind of range, and maybe even getting closer together, we're seeing this too. If you look at Missouri, Arkansas, and Kansas, you know, last winter they had that huge surge, then late summer they had a big surge, and here they are not with a dip like here, but actually things starting to head up again, and here comes Omicron on top of everything. Uh, and so I think you're getting that waning of, of, quote, natural immunity and or people not having gotten their third shots, and this is what you're going to see. And so if uh, Kansas, Missouri, and Arkansas are heading up like that, it looks like uh, the whole country's in for uh, a rough time here in the next couple of weeks. 
So I think one of the challenges is that I, there still are not what I would call clear goals with updated bash dashboards that reflect those goals. So uh, I think what we need is a couple things in our updated dashboards, hope at the local or state level. We need to set the, the real target, which is 85 plus percent fully vaccinated, not 70, 75, or 80. It should be 85 plus percent. It should be fully vaccinated, meaning all three shots, not just two. I think we should use an evidence-based common risk threshold, uh, kind of like COVID Act now or others use, and we need masking and or, and or green pass until we hit low risk. So our dashboard, I think, should be more something like this. Uh, we should be looking, I think, at vaccination rates with that boosters uh, being the real target, because until we hit this orange line starts, or this reddish line hits 85 plus percent, we're just not going to be past this thing. And I think we should be using evidence-based color thresholds. Uh, the Douglas County uh, dashboard does use the CDC thresholds. Uh, and then I think we need to adopt with the European Union, uh, New York, uh, Hawaii, a lot of other places, and some local concerts are mandating this too. We need something like a green pass if people are going to come inside uh, for like restaurants and things like that. Uh, and then keep in mind, you know, those case rates are only as accurate as your testing and positivity rate, and so most of Nebraska's numbers are far underestimating what they really are right now, unfortunately. So, given all this, what should you do? And I think this is a challenge right now. The first thing, of course, is go get vaccinated. Uh, you need to be that. We need to be this 85 plus percent booster and or third dose vaccinated, that should be considered fully vaccinated right now. So we all need to be getting toward this, not where we are in the United States. Uh, we need to be getting more like the English and then we wouldn't have these hospital capacity issues. Um, until then, you, if you're going to be in an unsafe environment where other people aren't masking, I wouldn't rely on just the, the plain uh, surgical or, or cloth mask if a lot of people around you aren't masking. So, you know, if I go to a restaurant, uh, a crowded meeting, or if I'm going to be on a plane, I'm going to be wearing a KF KN95 or a KF94 or something like that. I'm not going to just rely on something like that in that type of environment. So until the rest of the, the community gets to the, with the program, I'd be a little more careful, especially if you're a high-risk person. Uh, and then, you know, again, go back and read the scientific article. I think it does a good job of explaining things overall. Um, testing, uh, I think this, there's still a role for this. Uh, repeat testing might be also in order. Uh, my wife and I and our family, we're kind of evaluating what we're going to do for Christmas. We're going to get, we're, we still are planning to get our whole family together. How, uh, although we are going to be probably maybe a little harsher about making sure that people are vaccinated and probably adding testing as well, just to be on the safe side. We're still debating how we're going to do this. I think I'll make next week's, uh, 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 update uh, basically about how I think I'm going to try to have a safe holiday and maybe that'll help you with your family. Uh, and then just again, uh, I can't emphasize boosters enough, especially for those kids. If you want to make grandma safe for Christmas, please go get the grand grandkids vaccinated as soon as possible. So hopefully this is helpful to you. Again, this is what I do for a living, but disclaimer, these are my opinions, not necessarily those of all these people I work with and for.